Hey everyone, um, just trying to get set up here. Give me a second or two. Is all right. Let's see here. See who's able to join us. All right. I guess we can um, go ahead and get started here and um, see and just check out a um, uh, see if um, the snake will eat for us. If not, I have another one that, that is a good eater. This is a um, carpet python. They're from Australia. Um, they grow to, oh, six, seven feet long. This one is, this, this is a young um, female carpet python. She's just over four feet long. Uh, I have a pretty big rat for her today, so we'll see if um, <clears throat> we'll see if she will eat the will eat the rat. I'm gonna. This is her her opportunity for her first um, feeding outside of her cage, so it's gonna be interesting if she will do it. I'm hoping that she will. We can. If if not, I have a backup um, backup plan. This. Um, Species of snake in the wild eats mostly mammals and birds. They're um, as young. They're they're a climber, and as they get older, they stay more on the ground. They're quite bigger, a much bigger and, and heavy body body snake. Um, so let's see if we can see if we can get this snake to focus on her when she gets her head up close. But let's see if we can get this snake to um, to have a a meal for us, and we can talk a little bit about the how snakes eat and what adaptations in their skull, their their lower jaw, and then their their um actually their rest of their anatomy that helps them eat giant prey. Um, to start with, we just probably should um, mention to you that I will be feeding it a a frozen that's been thawed, um, and then also the that might take a while. I'm um, hoping not. I've, I've got a pretty big rat, so that we can really see how how the the, the adaptations um, work. But if you know if it takes longer than the than the 30 minutes we have time slot, I'll um, keep recording, and then um, we can a answer questions later. You guys can always send me a question via email or or Hangout. Um, again, my name's Cameron Young. I'm the director for the Center for Snake, Con Center for Snake Conservation, and we're looking at these um, Google Hangouts as an opportunity to bring snakes to your classroom, um, to your event, any way that we can. And we'll be doing lots of um, additional um, field trips, too, where we go out in the wild and look for snakes, um, taking taking you guys around, which is, is a lot of fun, um, really looking forward to those. Just because it, it, it's going to help us get kids outside. We don't always, always find snakes, but we always find something that we can talk about. All right, so I'm going to... Um, change the view around here. Sorry, that's my office. Um, so that we can see if this snake will eat a rat for us. It's interested and opened its mouth but decided to quit. Now they have um, pythons have heat sensitive pits on their face, um, and so it's it's trying to see if the rat's warm or not. And this one's a little bit warm; it could be warmer, but the smell should get it to. Now it's interested. All right, so. Pythons, of course, are constrictors. They um, 
kill their prey by wrapping around it, and as they as they kill it, um, what they're feeling for is they actually feel for the heart to stop beating. And as they as this as the every time the mouse or rat exhales, they squeeze a little bit harder. And so um, it's basically suffocation, and then they they wait for the the heart to stop. And then they don't they aren't they aren't ever wrong because they don't want the the prey item to come back to life. And so, you know, this is just a couple coils. If it had been a live rat, um, it probably would have wrapped it around four or five coils with its body um, to really um, make sure that it had a tight grip on it. And you can already see, let me take off the, the camera here and see if I can keep it still enough for you. But you can already see in here some of the adaptations that are, that are occurring um, or that the snake has for eating large prey. Um, the bottom jaw is starting to come apart. And it doesn't come apart like people say the, the bottom jaw separates. That's not what's happening. Um, what really happens is it has a, has a ligament um, between the two jaws. Now if you were to touch your jaw, um, if you were to touch your jaw right here, yours is attached. And, and, a, and a snake, it can come apart. Uh, pretty dark there. Let me see if I can do this better. So right here, your jaw is attached, and a snake it's not. There's a ligament there that allows it to open up and 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 widen. Another thing that a snake has is um, human jaws and mammal jaws are attached here. Um, they actually have an additional bone right here that allows their their jaw to come down um, before it opens up. Um, a lot of people think that swallow their prey. But actually what they do is they force their head over their prey. And we'll get a chance to look at that um, as, as this snake hopefully starts to see. It hasn't really started yet. I think it's waiting for the, the rat to die, um, <laughs> which isn't going to happen because it's already, it was, it was um, we, we, we bought it frozen. So um, let's just hope that it, it starts moving soon. Um, and then we can take a close look at that adaptation of where the jaw comes down and comes apart here. And then the rest of their skull, a snake skull, is very flexible, um, which helps, uh, the, helps the snake push its head over the prey item. And then, of course, they have four rows of teeth that all point backwards on the top of their mouth. And then on the bottom, they, each, each jawbone has a row of teeth, and they're all pointed backwards, which is going to be important for when... The, I'm going to put it back on the snake, and you guys can just kind of watch, and we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, it looks like this snake is going to take its time here. Um, let me back up a little bit. Hmm. Well, what I'm going to do as we as we wait for this snake to eat, I'm going to go ahead and get out the other snake, and and we'll we'll get it going too. So then we'll have two, and then see if, if see if one will go will go faster than the other one. So just one second here. Okay. This snake, this snake here is a California king snake, and they're snake eaters, so I have to be careful um, with, with um, it close to this other snake, but it can't eat that snake, so it should, probably shouldn't try. But I'll introduce the mouse. Hmm. It's still a little nervous with... I just got it out. It's going to be a little nervous for me.
Hmm. Well, we might be waiting for the, the python, and this is this is a known this this um king snake is a typically a very aggressive eater. Um, it might be that yeah, see, it's arching its body here. I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, this is a defensive right here. It's arching its body, but that's a defensive behavior um, by a snake. See, can you see it arching its body? That's something that snakes do. Um, as they defend themselves, which is kind of cool that we're getting to witness that, um, even though the snake doesn't appear like he's going to um, eat. Okay, so um, this the the python's beginning to, to make some movement um, on on it on eating. Um, so we'll. We'll, get, we'll take a look at it a little closer. I'll put that snake back away. So, one interesting thing is if it had bitten the the rat halfway. Sorry for the shakiness. Trying to get it there. If it had bitten the rat halfway down its body, it, it would still grab hold of, kill it. But what it would do then is smell up and down the um, snake, the rat's body, and it knows which end's the head end and which end's the tail end. And that's pretty easy because the, the tail end smells a little bit different, as you could imagine. Um, and then also the, and there's a reason for that. If you try and eat a, a rat from the tail first, the tail, the legs, they're all going the wrong way. And so snakes have developed ways to um, find, to smell the difference Um, sorry, I'm being quiet. All of a sudden, the snake is now trying to smell, and I don't want to be because um, I'll distract it from it from its meal here. Um, but they know they can smell the difference between the the head and tail end of the rat, so that the the legs fold down as it's eating it, and so that they don't have. Um, wish we had a little bit better focus. Um, so that they don't have um, issues with you know a leg sticking out, and that that's important when you're thinking about them eating bigger prey. Say, there we go. All right, so it's found the head end. And now it's going to get here and start going, start eating. Um, now if you watch it, it pushes. Put, see how it pushed its head over? And then it bites down. So it has no way of pulling the rat into its, into its mouth. What it does now is it's going to keep pushing. And it, see, it pushes forward sinks the teeth in, and it holds. And now it's going to probably a different part of its mouth. Yep, it moved the right side of its mouth. Um, let me see if I can hold this a little bit stiller from a different angle. Um, it will hold the right side of its mouth. Come on, focus. and then the left side of its mouth, right there. And so it's pushing forward. There it goes, the right side. See how it picks the teeth up and puts them in. And then it'll go. Oh, did the right side again. Pushes forward. So basically, it, snakes push their heads over, and that's why a lot of times it takes so long, but it also helps them with those backward curved teeth eat large prey, because once they get their teeth embedded, it's hard to get them out um, of the prey item. Now, a snake can open its mouth completely wide and regurgitate, um, keeping those teeth out of the way, but a lot of it's difficult now. Um, I could pick up the rat, and I would pick up the snake with the rat.
And I'm not going to do that because the snake would eventually um, open up its mouth and disengage those teeth that are holding the, the rat in as it pushes its head over. Now, if you imagine there's those four rows of teeth on the top. So it's doing a pretty good job of holding. And then there's also the four rows of teeth on the bottom. There it goes. It's pushing. You can actually see how it's really trying to push hard. So remember I talked about um, snakes having a, an additional jawbone? Well, you can kind of see right there where the jaw comes together that um, there's a bone in there that's going to allow that, that whole opening to open up even more. just going to watch for a while um, until it gets the, the prey just a little bit farther down in its, in its mouth. And then it's going to engage some other, other neat adaptations um, that allow it to eat giant prey. Now, this is equivalent, if you think about it, this is the equivalent of, of you or I eating a 50-pound hamburger in one bite without a knife or a fork to cut it up and without being able to chew it. Just have our mouth can't open that wide because it's completely attached to our skull, and then it's attached in the front, in the in the in the front of it. But also other things that that won't allow us to do that are um, is our collarbones. So if we think about trying to swallow something, we couldn't get it past our collarbones, um, and so that would be one of the most difficult things for us to do is get it past that. Um, Snakes don't have collarbones. They have ribs that can, that every vertebrae is, is attached to a rib, so they can expand out um, and open the, um, open up for the rat to go down its throat. Let's try from a different view here as it's coming through the it'll be coming through the the gap there. Uh oh, touch the snake. Something you're not supposed to do. We do these feedings for, for classrooms um, and it's really kind of cool because the kids can once the snake has the the prey, um, you're pretty you you are you're, you're pretty certain that it's gonna go ahead and finish it. These are captive snakes. They're used to people, they're used to being handled, and they're used to eating this way. So it's pretty, it's not a, um, as risky as something, as like the, a wild snake to, to catch and try and, and feed it. It's not going to eat for you. Um, the, snake, the snake obviously is eating well for us. It's going to take a little while, but it is going to go ahead and eat this, this rat. It really isn't a very good view right now. Um, oh, here we go. 
That's a little better. So there's the left side it pushes, engages the teeth. And then it's in do probably working on the bottom jaw now, and now the right side. Now you could actually right there you could see the the teeth. This snake has teeth that are about a quarter inch long, and they all point backwards. Um, and they're all needle sharp. People always ask me, well, do snake bites hurt? And I, uh, my response is, have you ever had a shot? Um, and most people have had shots, and that's how I could equate the prick of a snake's tooth. Even one this size would be the same sort of thing. Um, and if you sit still, nothing really happens to you except for you have a whole bunch of pin pricks in you. But if you jerk, that's when a snake's teeth can hurt you because then your your um, your hands your hand your teeth are ripped um, along the the teeth are are being ripped out of your skin and that tears your skin a little bit. Plus, some teeth can fall out. All the, their teeth are made so they can break and fall out of their um, mouth pretty easily. All right, there's the right side. Now, remember I said all the skull, the bones in its skull are flexible, and you can see that as it can move independently both sides of the, its upper jaw. Now, it's doing this on the same thing on the bottom jaw, but we just can't see that. Um, and also, the, the bottom jaw is separating um, is separating um, with that a ligament that's between the the um, the two the two jaw bones. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to focus on the snake and see if we can get a, a good view of all this. Um, there, so it's going to continue pulling in. Now, if you notice. Right here, the skin is stretching out. That's where our clavicle is, or our collarbone is, and that's where, on our bodies, we could not get the the rat past that, or that 50-pound hamburger. Or another thing to think about is the um, is a watermelon, is a large watermelon. We could not get it past the past the um, our collarbones. But the snake doesn't have those have that, so it 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 can it can definitely do that. And is that not having that is part of not having legs. And if they had legs, they'd have to have a collarbone. And that's why things like um, monitor lizards will tear chunks off of their, their prey item because they have legs. They can't get it. They have an attachment on, the, on their chest, so they can't swallow these big things. Now, there are some snake, uh, some lizards that can swallow big, bigger things, um, but nothing, nothing quite like what a snake can do. So it's, it's getting, now it's getting the muscles of its neck involved. And what I like to to equate this to is if anybody's ever iced a cake, um, you take put icing in a in a plastic bag, the old fashioned way, and cut the corner off the bag, and then you push the icing down. And so what you're doing with your fingers or your hand is you're making a smaller ring um, that you push down the bag so the icing comes out. Well, the snake is doing the same thing. It's pushing. Um, it's making a ring there, right there, a mus muscular ring and see how it pushes down. So right now, actually, the snake is doing a better job of, um, of swallowing versus pushing its head over, over the snake, over the, the rat. So the snake just moved. I was going to hopefully get a chance to show you how wide its jaw can open, um, see if it will change its, its view for us. There, you see that? And it hasn't even gotten the bottom jaw fully extended around this rat, but that's pretty big. And so right there, oh, it just moved, but there's an additional bone that goes from the corner of the jaw down to the bottom jaw. Um, and that bone just really lets this snake eat bigger prey items. Now our, our time's up. It's 1230, but um, if you guys want to continue and stay, stay here, um, I'll continue filming this snake eating, and we can just keep watching it. You don't have to go anywhere. Um, I might be a little quieter as we watch, but um, 
we'll definitely keep keep recording until this this snake is completely eaten this rat. One thing that, that you to consider now is that this snake is completely helpless. Um, oh, you can see the other snake in the background in that tub. Um, it's completely helpless. Its only defense are its teeth, and right now its teeth are complete are occupied um, eating the rat. Now, what I'm going to show you here, this is great that we're able to to see this. Um, there's the bottom jaw. Let's see, hopefully, it'll get in good focus. You can see how stretched out it is. So, right where the the angles are, right here. And then over here, that is where the the jaw bones are. So this right here, all this stretch in the middle, that's the ligament that allowed the jaw to stretch apart. And if you really, oh man, it just moved. Um, it's always interesting. People want to know how a snake breathes while it's eating, and you can see that 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 little flesh of skin right there by that black dot. That's the epiglottis and the, the glottis of the, the snake which is basically um, we have one it's the end of the windpipe and it goes along the bottom of the yeah, I wish this was in better focus sorry for the shakiness there we go it goes along the bottom of the the bottom jaw and it, they can push it forward and take in gulps of air through that glottis as they're as they're eating and they push it all the way past the, the prey item and open it up You can see those teeth that move forward and grab the prey. So it's still still pulling it in. Once it gets past this um this arm right here, arm of the the rat, things should go a lot faster. Let's see if we can watch the teeth this time. You can see them in there. Definitely see the teeth. There, you see how it gripped in? That's just awesome. I mean, it really is. It grips in, and it doesn't allow the rat to slide out of the mouth again. Snake's trying to get comfortable. Um, like I said, this is a big rat for this snake. It's not too big at all. Um, it can eat items, prey items that are even bigger than this one. But it just slows it down and takes a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the... Um, camera back on the tripod and we're just going to keep a a um, view from above of this snake eating. Sorry for the shaking. So 
and we'll just kind of keep a view from above here for a while. Um, see how, if I can get it a, a good view without too much glare. It's delicate because I can't really touch the snake at all. If I do, it would be um, it could make it throw up its meal. Chances are that's not going to happen with with this snake, but it definitely could happen. There we go. That's better. We can just watch it eat. What it's doing with its body is it's, it's, it's holding on to the, the rat. Um, this helps it push, you know, as it's pushing its, its head. Because if you don't hold on to the rat, um, you push forward and the rat just goes forward too. And so what, it, it, what the snake can do with its body, and, and not a, a, all the, the big constrictors do this. The, um, some of the smaller, don't, well, smaller ones that don't eat such giant prey items don't do it as much. But they hold on to the prey with the, rest, with the coils of their body. So when they push with the with those those the top and bottom jaw, like look at that bottom jaw there, goes and gri grips the, the thing that the mouse doesn't or the rat doesn't move as they're pushing their head over it, which is. They push, um, and and they can swallow once their muscles or the neck muscles are engaged, but. Um, it takes a while for those to really take a good hold of the rat and just then pull it in. I'm doing this on the floor um, for a reason because if the you know the snake's been moving around, I don't want it to ever. Better grip on the rat. And if you do that on top of a on top of a, a table, um, things can happen that, that we really don't want to happen, like the snake fall. That'll be a good view for a while. You can watch the top jaw now work. There, see the whole snake just pushed. Now what's going to be interesting is, is what a lot of people ask questions about is what happens when the, the, the rat gets down in the snake's throat and, and on its way to its stomach. Well, that's a um, interesting thing is because there's a heart in the way and there's a lung in the way. Um, and what happens is that heart gets pushed up against the, um, the ribs and the backbone and sometimes it can get squished. Um, and snakes have the ability to repair their, their heart extremely fast. And there's a, there's a professor at the University of Colorado who's actually studying um, pythons 
and their hearts and their ability to repair finding a way to um, help with human heart disease and find a way that we can uh oh I just scared the snake he um it backed off the prey item let's see did not mean to do that I don't know what just happened I hope it doesn't mean it's decided not to eat I'll sh see if I can show you what happened see how it it backed off it let go what's coming out of his mouth is water um, they will do a lot of that to get the um, let's hope it, uh, it still decides to eat so what came out of his water mouth is water and saliva and the saliva actually helps lubricate so that it'll go down its throat easier. And it backed out about two inches, but it's still holding it like it's going to eat it. Yeah, there it's going forward again. Guess it didn't like the angle. You never know with a snake. Um, sometimes they they surprise you. Um, and I think what happened was didn't like the way a foot felt going down or or something weird. I think I, and I could have spooked it a little bit. I was moving faster than I normally do and it's at me. Like right now it can't see me so I'm free to move. Um, but earlier it didn't do that. Now it's almost back to where back to where it, it let go which is good to see. See those holes on the bottom jaw there? Those are pits. Um, they're heat sensing pits. And snake, the pythons and, and some boas, or not all pythons, but some, most pythons and most boas have those heat sensing pits that are a real true infrared vision. The nerve that leads, leaves those pits goes directly into the optic nerve before it enters the brain. And so it's a real infrared vision and it's thought that this vision is, is more precise in detecting temperature differences than the, some of the, the machines that humans have made to, to detect um, infrared. Which is quite a feat, actually. That, that, and, and the reason that's important is when the snake's hunting, if it grabs, a, say, a leg of its prey, chances are it's going to be bitten by the, the mouse or rat or whatever. And then since these are from kangaroos, you know, so mostly marsupials is what, what this animal would eat, um, or in birds. But what the heat vision allows it to do is, is grab the hottest part of the prey item, which allows, you know, where the heart and lungs are, which is a more efficient place um, that allows for a more rapid death of its prey item rather than having to struggle with it, pull it around by its leg, and get bitten by whatever you're trying to eat. Snake has pulled itself underneath the, the paper towels I have here, and I think that's on purpose. I think it's trying to hide from me. Um, like I said, it's it's ve feeling very exposed. Its only defense is those teeth, and those teeth right now are engaged in making sure it can eat, and so um, that's why it's. I think it's trying to hide from me, as I am a big giant predator that it's afraid of. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, 
I'd be afraid of me if a giant. I mean, I mean, I'd be afraid if something as big as me, compared to this snake, started to um, watch me um, and see what I was doing and and pick me up or or do anything. And so that's one thing I want to want to let you guys know is there's not a snake in the world that is aggressive to humans. You define the word aggression or aggressive, and it means to attack violently, really, and there's no snake that, that would ever do that. Snakes are defensive. They defend themselves um, only when threatened. So even like a snake, like a rattlesnake, um, people are like, well, it struck at me. And a lot of times that, that striking is intentional to get your attention. Um, and once you have its attention, once it has your attention, then you're going to leave it alone. You're going to back away. The majority of people who are bitten by snakes are trying to kill the snake. And the majority of those people are between the ages of 18 and 30. Um, something, oh, and men. Um, so something about being male, having to be macho, I guess, and kill the snake, and they get bitten um, or try and catch the snake, which is something that, you know, I recommend you know all your snakes in your area, at least know what the venomous ones look like, so you can just stay away. And the, the rule of thumb that we use is take three steps backwards. Three steps backwards. That's all you need to be safe from a snake. Probably just one step um, would be good enough. But, but three steps would be great. Um, and we teach that to our kids. I take my kids out looking for snakes all the time. Um, and they know if they find a, a rattlesnake to take three steps backwards. It's just a very simple rule. Um, and then call me, of course. There's a, trying to get a better angle on the teeth that are coming out here. So. This, this, there's a lot of people that say cottonmouths will chase you um, and try and bite you. No, cottonmouths, if they're defensive, opening their mouth and showing their white, their white um, opening of their mouth doesn't work. They will come at you in a way that they're curious. Um, like if you, you can put your hand in the water near a water snake or a cottonmouth and splash it, they'll come at you. Um, they're, they're curious to what that, that noise is. Um, not the noise and that you can hear it, but it can feel the vibrations of the of the noise or the whatever motion you're making, um, and come investigate to see if it's a, a fish. Say it's a fish that's caught somewhere or dying, um, and they want they want to they're curious about it. And then another thing that the snake approaching you is that it's trying to let you know that it, that it doesn't want to be stepped on. Um, rattles on a rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes evolved here in the um, southwestern United States, south, southwestern North America, I should say, because the United States weren't there when, it, when, when they evolved. And there was giant mammals around. Um, huge herds of elk, bison, ground sloths, um, mastodons, lots of big animals. The rattle was just a way for the snake to say, I'm here, please don't step on me. If, and you can see that in today's with cows. If you if a rattlesnake's in the middle of a pasture and cows are walking by it, um, the cow the rattlesnake will rattle and the cows will will just make a wide berth around the snake and it's just a warning of here I am please don't step on me because if a rattlesnake bites one of those things it's not gonna it's not gonna kill it it can't eat it so it's not gonna um, want to want to do anything like that it doesn't want to kill it. Snakes don't try and kill things that they can't eat. They're a good judge of size when they're sizing up prey. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but for the most part, they're pretty they, they're pretty good about knowing how big 
a prey item is. And this has taken just a little bit longer than I thought it would. Um, I think at the beginning, and then the snake is um, really taking its time here on getting past those front arm, the, those, the, the front legs of the rat. Once it's past those, it really can go a lot faster. But it's just really, you can see how stretched open that mouth is. Now remember, if you have to go, um, I know we're over our time, if you have to go, um, this will be on YouTube, and you can watch it, um, fast forward it, do whatever you need to, um, to just kind of see the, the, the end of this, this carpet python eating a rat. Look back here, you can see how far the head's made it, and then there you see the muscles there doing that, what I said, like like pinching a ring and then it pushes down. I don't know what it is. I've seen hundreds, if not thousands, of, of snakes eat in my lifetime, and I still just watch it with utter fascination. Um, just that they can they can actually do this, that their jaws, the skin is so flexible. The jaws they have that third bone in their, or an extra bone in their bottom jaw, and that the, the front of it can separate out so far. Um, their top jaw is flexible so they can move their the, the, the teeth independently on each side um, that the the brain case is really the only solid part of the the snake's skull I mean it's just an amazing thing to watch and I um I really enjoy it every time I get a chance to do this and um, just can't lose that fascination with with watching a snake eat sure it might take a while um, and there's different approaches to it. Um, there's some snakes that, that eat things alive. There's the snakes that kill things with venom. Um, and then there's the snakes that are constrictors and will, eat, will kill their prey before they eat it. The snakes that eat things alive are kind of scary to watch. Um, they're just extremely fast. They, they choose smaller prey items, and then they just they just chew right onto it, and they're... they're um, 
an example would be like a garter snake that eats a eats a frog. Um, they're just going to grab the frog and start eating it. Another example could be um, a water snake that eats a fish. Now, water snakes have some pretty neat um, adaptations in their saliva that are have anticoagulant, meaning they, they stop blood from clotting um, in their saliva, which helps kill the fish pretty rapidly. So you could say that they're killing the the the, the fish um, in a way, but what but by by not allowing their the blood to clot, um, it speeds up the, the the process of bleeding out and then also oxygen transfer from water um, through the gills. So it's really kind of a um, neat way. So there's the the three ways of, of getting prey: is your your venom, your constrictor, or you just eat. Now picture that 50 pound hamburger or that 5 or 6 pound or even 10 pound watermelon that you're trying to shove in your mouth, breathe at the same time, and get it down without hands, without being the ability to chew it up or tear it up. Snakes have it hard, but they also have the, the really uh, cool ability and adaptations to be able to do this. There is, I should, I should, I should say, there is a um, snake in the world that does tear its prey apart. There's a um, type of water snake in Southeast Asia that catches crabs. Um, it coils around a crab like a constrictor. Now you're not going to be able to kill a crab because they have hard shells by constricting them, but they try and find the soft-shelled crabs, the ones that are just freshly molted, so they can hold on to them a little bit better, and then they rip the legs off and eat the legs individually um, they, so they bite down the leg and pull hard and the leg comes off and then they also then they eat the body of the crab which is pretty amazing that there is there is a snake that does break apart its food before it eats it. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of a queen snake or a crayfish snake here in the United States and those snakes eat like they say a crayfish and the queen snake um, also eats crayfish it's, it's very closely related to the cray, crayfish snakes. The queen snake targets soft-shelled crayfish. And so it, it can follow around, it can, it can smell when a crayfish is just molted. And so and as crayfish grow, they have to shed their skin. Their exoskeleton has to come off because it doesn't have the ability to grow. Um, and so they find those that have just shed or just molted, and they, they eat those. Now the crayfish snakes, some of them, there's a, like, there's a lot of different varieties of crayfish snakes in the United States. Some of them... Um, eat so other soft-shell crayfish, but other ones eat hard-shell crayfish. In order to do that, they actually have a ratchet um, built into their, their jaw, and it's not like a ratchet, like a ratchet wrench, but they have a tooth that can... Uh, oh, the snake just had a big exhale. Um, they have a tooth that they can pull forward independently of the other teeth and hook into the, the prey, and then it ratch kind of ratchets back so that it can hold on to a hard a hard crayfish, the shell of it, which would be slippery and hard for most snakes to 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 eat, but this this type of crayfish snake has a that ratcheting um, action of of the teeth to pull it in. There's a lot of snakes out there that eat other snakes. Our king snake is a good example of that. Um, racers will eat other snakes. The king cobra is probably the most famous snake that eat, eats other snakes, and, and, you know, the king snake and the king cobra, um, they have that king in their name. Um, other snakes are pretty, pretty, um, pretty, um, cool, pretty easy, I should say, prey items for them to, to eat, and the, if you think about it, it's another long skinny thing, it's like, just suck it down. Um, so there's a lot of snakes that are adapted for that, and king snakes um, are, are not technically immune to rattlesnake venom, but they have a, a ability to deal with it. Um, so if a rattlesnake bites a king snake, what their blood does is it isolates the venom and doesn't allow it to attack the the rest of the king snake cells. So I guess that is a type of immunity, but it's not like um, it's more of a defense mechanism against rattlesnake venom. 
Um, so they're able to take a bite from a rattlesnake and still survive. And, and a lot of times if it's a small rattlesnake, the king snake will eat it alive. Or if it's a big one, they can eat a, a rattlesnake as big as they are, um, as long as they are, um, almost, it, it, with, with some, some exceptions, um, that they can, you know, the, the, if you think about it, a long snake, it's like just, it's pretty easy to swallow compared to this, this fat rat. Um, we're getting, we're getting farther down, we're almost to the back legs now. Still pushing the jaw forward and latching it to help get the the, mount, the rat in, and then if you watch the, the neck, you can see the constriction of the muscles as it pulls down, like just like you icing a cake. You know, you're pushing the icing towards that hole, and in this case, it's just pushing the the prey item or the rat farther down its neck. About another oh, see how it pushed its head forward, and about another three inches of when this, this, the snake gets this rat down. I'll show you um, how it, how, where the heart is and what's happening. In the lung right now, snakes have one lung. Um, depending on the, the evolution of the snake, it could be the right lung or the left lung that, that's left, that, that is still there. Um, but as they, so one lung, and it get, it's, it's very um, collapsible. And right now, it would be, squished flat up, up, up against the, the body cavity of the snake, against their ribs and their vertebrae, and all those muscles that are attach all those together. So you have, uh, this is, I would like to move this, but I'm really nervous now because the snake's looking right at me. I'm trying not to move. Just my lips moving enough or I can see the, see a little bit of nervousness in the snake. Um, It's still holding on to it with those coils. As it's, I mean, this is really, really pushing hard. See that little, that little nub that's between the that sticks out? That's that glottis I was talking about that allows the snake to still breathe. It's very muscular, so it can push against the prey item and open up, and so the snake can take a breath. Even though its lung is getting collapsed, it doesn't completely collapse. There's still air in it. But see, look, that just took a big breath. Just opened up, and it's breathing right now. Just amazing that that snake can, can push a breathing tube really out. And I always think of it as like a... Um, you know, in the cartoons when the the animals hiding in the water, or the the cartoon cr creatures hiding in the water, and they're drink they're breathing out of a straw. Well, it would be really difficult for a human to breathe in and out of a straw. Um, but look at the snake. The snake is doing it. There's taking another breath.
another breath. That's just amazing to me. Snake's readjusting its grip. Gotta move the camera because it is getting ready to touch the snake and I don't want that to happen. The note now think about it. In the wild, this snake is eating a, a marsupial, say a, some sort of tree marsupial that it's just caught, and it takes this long to eat. That's pretty, um, that's pretty risky for a snake to do. So that, you know, it can eat a large prey item, but it's, it's exposing itself to a lot of risk. What if some other predator found the snake like this right now? It would be an, have an easy time of killing it. But the benefit is that you have a large prey in you and you don't have to eat for a long time. Now, look at its tail over there, it's wrapped around the, the table. And that's another thing, is if this snake were up in a tree, it could wrap its tail around and hang upside down, hang from the tree branch by that tail while eating. And that's why another reason why they hold on to their, their prey. Trying to get a good view for you, about as best as I can do here um, without moving around right now and, and spooking the snake too much. So it's exposed itself now for about an hour to a predator. But what, it, what this giant rat does, or whatever it ate in the wild, allows it to not eat for four six, maybe even weeks, maybe even two months, um, depending on how big the prey item is. So you think about those giant snakes that eat, say they, they catch a, a wild pig, or they catch a deer, or an antelope. Um, they don't have to eat for six months. Maybe even that's their only meal for the year. Um, females probably can lay a lot more eggs when they eat a, a giant prey item like that, versus a year where they're eating a lot, a lot of little ones. Um, so, another adaptation, you risk yourself, you put yourself at risk of predation, but you don't do it very often because you eat such large prey items. All right, the snake is getting close, getting very, very close to being done. Um, once it gets the, the feet in, and it can just use those neck muscles to pull the, the prey in, it goes a lot faster.
So we're getting close to being done. Now you can see that large rat. skin is all stretched out, the ribs are open. It's getting ready to go. It's squishing the heart about now. Um, the heart is the heart of the snake is right about here. So it's getting ready to go past the heart. See extra snake cages in the background.
actually kind of not really swallowing, but pushing the rat towards its towards its stomach, which is has got a long way to go. Stomach's a little bit more than halfway down the length of their body. Every time I move the camera, the snake moves. You can see a, sorry about the, the messy background there. Um, it's the, the cup I use for thawing the rat in warm water. And then the, the container that the, the snake travels in. It's not its cage, it's just it's a travel container. Seems like the camera wants to focus back there. And what the snake's doing right now is it's, it's um, by yawning like that, it can help re get the jawbones back in the right spots again. There it is. Almost down, just a little bit of the tail left. The snakes digest everything. They just digest hair, bone, fingernails, 
it all gets digested, um, which is kind of unique. A lot of, you know, some birds will spit up the bones and hair. Um, some other animals won't eat the bones or won't eat the skin, the hide. Um, snakes eat it all and they digest it all. You can see the saliva in the snake's mouth. That he helps to lubricate the, the rat before it goes down the down the down its throat. Um, right now, the snake's heart is being squished. Um, let's get a different view here of what's happening. This would be a good view. So that lump is going down the snake. Another yawn to get the jaw bones back. You can see the, the lump going down. See the muscles pushing it down. And that's how a snake eats. All right, I'm going to stop the broadcast there. Just say um, thanks for joining me. Um, it was a good time. I hope that you learned a lot. Um, I'm learning on how to do these Google Hangouts. We'll try and maybe um, shorten them a little bit. I know this was a long one. But at the same time, um, the, the, the snakes that's how long they expose themselves to risk of, of a predator um, while they're eating. I mean, it's, it's quite a lengthy lengthy process, and so I think that's good that we were able to learn and see that. Um, and so signing off here, I'm Cameron Young with the Center for Snake Conservation, and I hope you can join me next time for a hangout, or actually more importantly, I think that you guys would love to hang out with me as we do a virtual field trip and we catch snakes in the wild and take a look at them, um, see where they live, see what they what 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 they do, where they live, and and the other organisms, and plants and grasses and holes and everything else that they that they share their their environment with. All right, I hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.